In this episode, we're calibrating the Taz 3D printer by printing a fully functional Imperial Walker? Are you crazy? That's right, this week we're building an Imperial Walker, an Atta, you know, not a chicken walker, but the Imperial Walker from The Empire Strikes Back. This thing is really cool, you know, it's got a gear assembly with over 24 gears, very complex and tight tolerances. For me, a couple weeks ago I rebuilt the hot ends on the TAS-4 and I need to test them and dial in the calibration for the slicer. So this is a great opportunity to do something cool, have a little fun, generate this model, and dial in the printer at the same time. Before we get started, we're going to have to pull up these files in Simplify 3D, get them all sliced up and prepared for Octoprint. Let's run through that process real quick. Alright, so we got all these parts sliced up, uploaded to Octoprint, and we're good to go. Now we're going to run through those. It's going to take quite a while. We've got tons of parts. They're all 3D printed, fortunately. Tolerances are pretty tight. So this is going to put our hot ends and our slicer configuration to the test. So let's get these things printed up. So we ran through the parts, they came out pretty good. We got the low spot Taz dialed in in terms of the slicer settings, and these things turned out really tight tolerances. The gears mesh really well. We got lots of about 24 different gears that are all various ratios, and these go into the gear train. This is what's gonna be responsible for making the legs move. Got tons of little parts, tons of legs. You see a body over here? I know what you're saying. It's a black model and it should be white, right? Well, you know, we're doing our own thing here. This is gonna be like an anarchy stormtrooper version of the AT, -AT Walker, and so just bear with me, it's gonna look cool. So let's take this all over to the workbench and get this thing assembled. For the most part, these are good to go and, and we can just assemble them the way that they are. But there are a couple parts that have some burrs and because of the support, um, they're a little rough. So I'm going to take a file to some of these and clean them up in preparation for the gear assembly. And now when I assemble this, I'm going to use a silicone lubricant, the food grade. I think that's going to work well. Almost all these parts are printed in ABS. They're strong. They'll wear well when they're grinding on the gears. The only part I didn't do in ABS was the body and the head, which is done in a hips filament, which generally warps less. And for this, these large parts, I wanted to make sure that they were solid. They and split or have any warpage issues. That aside, let's first clean up these parts, hit them with some silicone lubricant, and <laughs> So that's it, uh, assembly was pretty straightforward. There was a couple pins that broke. These things were a little tedious and not too strong. Probably could have printed them with a higher density, but I just reprinted them, glued them, let them sit for a while. Now I'm just using Zappa Gap, which is like a super glue medium filler. So with some of the tolerances were off, these didn't fit really tight. So that worked great for that. Just had to make sure that it set up well. The gear train on this particular build is really cool. It's over 50 parts and it works really well. I wouldn't say it's exactly like the motion picture, but it's a clockwork mechanism 
mechanism that's pretty impressive for being entirely 3D printed. So this entire gear train just runs off of a small geared motor. It's 210 to 1 ratio and it's 6 to 12 volts. We're just using a 9 volt battery. This actually slides in up here and then we've got a small motor gear that goes on it right there. And that drives the entire assembly of probably 40 plus gears in a clockwork mechanism which drives the legs through their motions. I've got this switch in line that will mount on the body and for now the body looks like this and it'll sit right up on here. So we're gonna add some graphics to this to spice it up a little bit and then we'll be good to go. But in the meantime, let me get you some close-ups of the gear mechanism functioning. And you can see how impressive it is and how it's a real test of how calibrated your 3D printer is when you have to print out 70 parts and make them all work in a clockwork mechanism. So let's check that out. So that's it, we got some Empire inspired graphics on it and we're pretty much done. It's just a matter of wiring up the switch now and going over and testing it out. But before we do that, we're gonna take off the body, get some video of the gear mechanisms in motion, and then we'll button this up, take it over and show you the full demo. So there you have it, it kind of walks and then it falls often too. And you know, I really wanted to say this is a perfect machine and it works so awesome and it's so representative of what the ad ad stands for, but not so much. It's 3D printed, it's around 40 or 50 gears in the gear train alone. And so that's an impressive accomplishment in itself. Hats go off to the designer. Um, but for me, it was really about calibrating and dialing in the TAS. And I think I've accomplished that through this process. I feel confident that everything's dialed in after rebuilding all the hot ends and we're good to go. But hopefully you enjoyed watching this process. It was fun for me to do. I was hoping it would turn out a lot better, but I think it's gonna look great sitting on the shelf. We got some really cool projects coming up. So stay tuned. In the meantime, stay safe, have fun. I'll see you next time. Hey, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. It's how we're building in the community. Also allow me to bring better content. Also check me out on these other social networks. There's lots of cool stuff there too. See ya. Please stop. It's okay. You tried.